it's recording. Ah, welcome to the IPFS in web browsers and GUI team weekly sync up calls. Uh, we have a special treat from Gazala this week. But first and foremost, let us do the what I done last week, what I'm going to do next week. Lidl, guess what? You're top of the list. Could you give us five minutes on how's oh, wow. it going? Oh, wow. Who knew? <laughs> Uh, not much like visually this week, uh, but maybe I'll quickly share my screen just to. Um, so uh, I shipped a release of IPFS Companion with some uh, with new web UI, uh, some UX fixes, and uh, this prototype of new way of obtaining in IPFS API instance. Um, so the goal is to the transition from exposing all commands directly in window IPFS object. Uh, instead, we want to move this quarter to a thin uh, like entry point IPFS uh, enable method that lets you both uh, lazy load, lets a developer to control when the uh, permission prompt will be displayed, and also to ask for multiple uh, commands at once. Uh, so that's uh, on the beta channel. And also uh, and also some small fixes related to new APIs that landed in Firefox for copying files, uh, copying stuff to clipboard and things like that. Um, there is a known regression in web UI <laughs> uh, that should be beta. And we I hope to release the, like another beta this week. Uh, that will be addressing that. And then uh, sort of uh, on the Go IPFS uh, front with the HTTP gateway, uh, I propose to uh, you know, start listening on localhost on IP, IPv6. That gives us uh, a little nicer location bar. Uh, just like a cosmetic, uh, but there's like a support for listening on multiple ports. So uh, that's something I will probably PR next uh, in the next week. And uh, that's a, uh, related to GUIs. There's a glossary for terms on Transifex, uh, our translation uh, crowd sourcing site. And uh, I ha had some like disc internal discussions about team growth, uh, but that's probably not a good topic for this call. Yeah, so the plan for the next week is to unblock a companion release and move forward with this stuff. And uh, I'm afraid that's all from me. So I'll stop sharing now. That is quite all right. That's good. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I was interested about the IPv6 colon colon one work that you're doing. Are you proposing to make that the default redirect? And yeah, so that's like a tricky question because uh, we should not assume IPv6 will be available everywhere. Uh, but the idea, the idea is to make uh, Go IPFS smart enough to uh, like ignore, listen on both v4 and v6, and ignore v6 address if it's not supported uh, by the runtime environment. Uh, and I think it requires additional sort of like a smart, adding additional smart detection to companion. And if, if we have that, uh, then we probably should, could be safely switch to the, the colon colon one as a new default, because it just looks a little bit nicer. Yeah. I, the, I'm interested in the, uh, the UX that the looks a bit nicer thing. I wonder if uh, we should test that with humans we should do some user testing as to whether yeah, they're like, let, let, okay, let, let, let me rephrase, it's shorter. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, I think it's not ideal either which way. Oh, Gazala, are you saying words? Uh, your microphone is, uh, you are not muted, but your microphone appears to not be. Oh, oh, click, click. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, I was just going to ask, so you mentioned UX, is, are people supposed to see that address ever at all? Anywhere? We, I think, well, Martin can talk about this, but ideally not, but we have no option today. We just lack the APIs in the browser, Martin? Yeah, so like uh, there are no like web extension APIs to control location bar. 
you can only like add an icon on the right side in Firefox. Th that's basically it. The, um, this this is the point where you say you add uh, IPFS colon slash slash CID into the URL bar. The web extension detects that, but the only API available to it is to redirect that to another URL. Yeah. I see. So that's when you want to show it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. Um, we definitely don't want to show it, but <laughs> we currently have no choice. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, next up, who's next in the list? Diogo, do you want to tell us how it's been going? What you've been working on? Hello. I'm going to share my screen, although I don't have much to show. That's okay. So, yeah. Basically, last week I made some fixes to web UI. Uh, the the ad path wasn't working. Now it's working. The ad folder wasn't working too, and now it's working. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah. I released the new version of Web UI too, but uh, sadly, when I fixed the add folders, I I broke the add files. So, it, it, yeah, it wasn't good. Um, I'm fixing it right now. I just opened a pull request that I'll probably share on chat. I already pinged you guys because I need your input. Because what what's happening right now is we can uh, add folders and files through this button. Uh, with no problem, but when drag and dropping, uh, sometimes some files are breaking because when we drag and drop, uh, we have no no sensible way of saying of checking if it's a file or it's a folder. So with React, drag and drop. So right now, that's uh, the um, what I'm testing basically. If the type is is different from an empty string, this works for most of the cases. But there are some file types that uh, it's a file, but the, the file of the type, it's the empty string. There's an open issue in React drag and drop. I just uh, ping, ping the people that open the issue to see if there's uh, news, but I, I don't think so. Uh, so basically, you, you can read the, the issues, the, the, the PR that is in web, and then comment to, to see what we should do next. Uh, I think it, um, it's certainly not pretty, but uh, I, I don't think there's like one cross-browser way of doing it, but I think there are various browser-specific checks that you can do to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we'll save that for the issue. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, apart from that, as I'm the next week, I'll pass to what I'm going to do. Uh, hopefully, I'll finish this PR. I have another PR open that is uh, opening the context menu with the right click. That's working, but I'm always opening the, the context menu on the, the right of the screen, where the dots are. I want to change that and open the context menu where the user right click. Uh, I spent some time to, trying to do that, but I wasn't able. But last night I was thinking of a different way, and I think I, I found one, and I'll try to, to make that work. Probably it's going to work. So next week, I'm going to finish these two PRs. And as I'm refactoring the files list and the drag and drop and the, the, the add to IPFS and the add by path, all, all of that menu from the web UI, it's going to be a good time to think about the drag and drop and find a solution to that. So I think I'll work on a big cake and fix lots, lots of issues uh, while doing that. Uh, I think that's it for me. Super cool. Um, Enrique is not here. Let's skip ahead. Or uh, just quickly, uh, I will read out what Enrique has been working on. He has been working on copy and paste uh, shortcuts fixed on Mac OS. So this is a problem on Mac with Electron apps that if you don't explicitly add copy and paste options to the title bar menu, the actual act of copy and pasting is not available to your application which is kind of fun. Uh, he's done the research for getting binary signing for the desktop installer for Windows. So uh, we've started that ball rolling there. Um, he has released desktop 0.6.1, which has a few fixes in, uh, and also was a good test of the auto-update mechanism. Uh, alas, the auto-update mechanism will only work for Windows users right now, and we have already had a bug report of one user who's 
working 0.6 desktop became a not working 0.61 desktop. So we need to do some more testing of that. Um, and Hack is also working on context menu extension. So he's looking at the uh, integrating desktop and IPFS more tightly into the Windows OS. So you could right click on a file in the OS file browser and have one of the options be add this file to your IPFS repo. Uh, so there's an open issue for that that's listed in the call notes. Da -da -da -da. Um, I am next. So I will share my screen real quick. Uh, at the beginning of the week, I fixed the problem with the geolocation of the peers. Um, we have been getting complaints that the process of geolocating people is too CPU heavy. Um, and that's a mixture of the browser doing a lot of work and IPFS under the hood doing a lot of work to load the relevant chunks of the B-tree encoded version of the MaxMind GOIP database loaded over IPFS. The combination of the two things, plus the act of you load subsets of the, of the database encoded as blocks in IPFS into your repo. That means you now have more blocks to advertise. And then as you advertise more blocks, you get additional peers who are interested in those blocks or also host them. And you get this kind of runaway spiral of like, ah, you found more blocks and announcing more blocks and then you're geolocating those more people you found. So it's a, it's a vicious cycle anyway. So we've reduced the amount of geolocation in the game that goes on. Uh, but at the same time, in parallel, we updated to the latest version of the IPFS HTTP client library, which also included the changes to the return objects from the uh, object get, uh, object get commands. Anyway, all of the various node types used to have a dot multi-hash property if they were of type DAG PB. They no longer have that, and uh, there was a round of uh, making things consistent. So now, uh, also their link properties don't have a dot multi hash property; they have a dot CID. Long story short, geolocating failed in Web UI, and the fix was a simple like, "Are oh, we going to need to go and update the geolocating IPFS hyphen uh, GOIP needed to be updated to make use of the latest?" uh api changes there so that fixed that um doo -doo -doo -doo, so what have i got right now i'm working on an opt-in uh anonymous analytics uh and self-hosting that i think the, the the need is we have no idea how many people are using web ui and we have no idea how many people are using desktop and we don't know what features of it that they're currently trying to use and we don't know if they're seeing errors in production unless they raise github issues so the proposal is that ipfs hosts an analytics server and that the apps enable the users to opt in to uh, metrics and analytics tracking it's it'll be anonymized so there'll be nothing in them that uh, has any personal information and it will be self-hosted, so we're not just going to be dumping people's data on Google Analytics or Segment IO or whatever. Um, so we're, we've got a Countly, which is one of the first ones that I've tried that looked like reasonable self-hosted analytics service. Uh, it's got all the things you might expect: visitors, sessions, devices, resolutions, what's like languages. I can see that when I used my profile that had simplified Chinese as the language that came up as one of the metrics that you can see uh, screen densities device screen resolutions that kind of thing da, da, da. anyway it's self-hosted analytics it seems pretty good um, so then I've been working on the opt-in opt-in-ness of it so if I load my browser now I can see that analytics are off and there is no no analytics logging. There's a bunch of errors that I need to clean up, but there's no analytics errors. Uh, and then you can enable enable analytics, and then we can see that a bunch of stuff gets queued up. And then if we start clicking around, uh, we should get analytics events. Yeah, no view. Yeah, processing view. Cool. Uh, so that's where I'm at with that. I've got the first pass of a. Got the first pass of a 
Redux bundle for Countly Analytics that starts off with things disabled until we discover that the user has previously uh, opted in. We store that value in local storage so that when you initialize the app the second time around, um, we know that they have opted in. And we're deliberately tracking just the uh, root info pattern that you that you navigated to. So, for example, if you were to go explore a CID in the Explorer, part of the URL would include uh, a CID, and we don't want to track specific CIDs that individuals go to, so we don't do that. Also, files, if you drill down into uh, anything in the files tree, like again, if we sent the entire URL, we would start to track like personal things that are in your local repo, which we don't want to do. Um, so this bit of code here is explicitly tracking the root info pattern, which means that we discover that they went to some, they, what we see in the analytics is just that they went to file star rather than, um, where is it? Uh, page views. So we see things like they went to the files section and they went to explore. We don't see specific CIDs or anything that could be deemed inappropriate to track. Anyway, that's where I'm at with that. Da -da -da. Um, I've also pushed along the, we want to get signed installers for OS X and Windows. Enrique has been pushing on along the Windows stuff because that's his OS of choice. I've been pushing along the Mac OS stuff. So I've just got access to uh, enough uh, Mac developer, Apple developer accounts that I can now, I've now got the licenses I need. I just need to integrate them with the CI setup. So that will be done this week. Uh, and I hope to roll out the analytics stuff that I've been working on this week too. Um, the Windows stuff's going to take a bit longer, but um, it's important that we get the Mac OS done. The, the only blocker to announcing desktop more widely in its current form is the fact that the uh, we can't auto update Mac OS until we have it as a signed install. So that's, that's next on that. Do, 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 Hugo, Mr. Diaz, would you like to go next? Or was there any questions on any of that? Sounds good. Go for it, Hugo. Hey, so let me just share. You need to stop sharing. Okay, it's Chrome, so many Chromes. What is this here? Okay, so I've been working on Bubbling up all the pull requests about the bundle size stuff. Uh, some of them are straightforward, others are giving me a little bit of work, like Amplex. Uh, we'll talk about uh, that a little bit more later. For you guys that don't didn't see the issue on the JS IPFS or the pull requests. Um, these are kind of the final values of all this bundle size work. So the modules loaded or required uh, were kind of uh, reduced to 38%. Uh, the size of the bundle, if you take into, into account the unmi unmanified uh, size, actually 57% uh, smaller. The minified 52% and the minified and the zip 50% uh, reduction. So you can see the so smart analyzer here. This is like the previous uh, version, and this is the new one. You can see that it's a lot simpler and has uh, a lot less uh, packages in them. So uh, this is. Uh, uh, unfinished work, as you can see, I'm still waiting for stuff to get released, and uh, I'm still yet missing a, a couple of packages to get uh, released until I 
finally get this merge and release on the JS IPFS, or even in, with PHP or the HTTP client. So this uh, ongoing work. Uh, also, I'll be working on the multi uh, async package um, regarding the async iterators in the airport. Uh, this was kind of a request from David, and I think this uh, aligns with uh, Ross's work. Um, so I accepted it, and this will allow me to work a little bit on the buffer and the array buffer support, so we can be a little more um, performant on in the browsers. And I'll. I'll Try to finish this uh, this week. I also have uh, some had some uh, calls with the Neoform guys. Um, we are trying to plan for the end over of all the work they have done on the um, on JSIPFS and on the benchmarks um, setup they produced. And for the next couple of weeks, uh, I think probably a month, uh, we will start to do an end of our process. Uh, and uh, I'll be particularly focused on the CI part. Uh, because as you all know, the CI thing is still a question mark. <laughs> um, and uh, we need to kind of understand how the near farm, near, near farm stuff works so we can after integrate that whole thing on our uh, on our CI system, uh, and for the next couple of days, I will be working on that. I'll have a bunch of calls with the Neoform guys, and I'll try to finish the bundle size and multi hashing stuff. Anyone has any questions? Uh, oh yeah, uh, one more thing um, about the. Um, one of the calls with the new farm guys was about performance and some of the bottlenecks that we have. And when one package uh, came up being like the biggest um, uh, problem on JSIPFS. Uh, and actually that uh, specific package gave me a lot of troubles on the bundle size PR because it's basically a complete mess it needs to be like refactored uh, fast that package is like amplex um so amplex is kind of a uh, strange thing to <laughs> work on because uh, go to go the go side of things probably will move on with quick uh, on the node.js side uh, we will probably work with the Node Core team to implement Quick on Node Core, um, as the Nearform guys are working with the uh, working on Node. It's kind of a, a like the plans are kind of aligning, and we, we will have more conversation about implementing Quick in Node. So what's left is kind of the it's the browser. So Amplex will probably end up being only needed for the browser, uh, and it needs uh, kind of a, a f attention, and someone needs to work on it. I don't know if uh, the libphp guys can prioritize that um, as soon as possible and start working on it, or if we can kind of uh, take on that work. So this is kind of a question for you all. What do you think about this? Should we like uh, volunteer to work on it? Uh, or you guys think it should be someone from the LeapHP side of things? I, my initial reaction is it's risky to uh, suggest that the in-browser implementation is somehow like not a core LeapP2P responsibility. Um, but I do take your point. Um, if it's if it slips down their list of prioritizations, then we may have to pick up the slack. But my first preference would be to make it clear to them how important it is to us if it is if it is needed. I'm not totally clear on what piece of the puzzle that bit fits. Um, but 
Do you go for it, Hugo? Yeah, yeah uh, I agree with you. Um, and I, I would prefer uh, for them to um, go ahead and prioritize that as one of the main things to do next. Mm -hmm. Because the guys from New Farm actually were pretty uh, specific about it and they explained it really well why that thing is kind of a mess. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't really know if they are going to do it right now or in like two or three months. Okay. Uh, they have a, the team week the next week, actually in Porto. So mm -hmm. I'll try to participate in that and push that as much as I can uh, and try to figure out if we need to intervene or not. Okay. Uh, it's, um, the, the, I think what's, in, what's important for us to do is figure out how important, like what impact does it have on the in-browser experience. And if we're saying that um, the MPLEX module was highlighted as the, like, the biggest performance bottleneck, then I would say that it's a high priority. And that, but we just need to make sure that we're clear about how important this is to us and then trust them to prioritize it reasonably well. But um, yeah, we can't do enough to... <laughs> nudge like keep reminding them that it's important um, so what, what I'm trying oh, when I try to do I don't, you want to say something uh, yeah like uh, I basically agree with uh, Oli on that and also uh, if we could like if we look back uh, there's a lot of uh, sort, sort of like transports or things like uh, WebSocket Star and other things that are like formally under the like P2P and uh, th those are like basically only for the web browser to ensure that the P2P works in web browser. So I'm quite strong, <laughs> like my opinion is quite strong that it's like the core responsibility of the P2P is to, for it to work good in web browser and like IPFS is uh, like one of many clients that use the P2P in web browser, right? Uh, the, the, again, it just comes on like we can do a good job of showing them how this is hurting us or what use cases this is making impossible or like it, as long as we make it easy for them to see the, the importance of it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, I, uh, I mentioned this just because it's uh, a real issue and a, a big issue for us and the, uh, if the quick stuff uh, starts to get uh, prioritized by them uh, and as Amplex it's only for the browser we kind of need to be aware of it and all in, together as a team kind of talk with the rest of the guys and like push this stuff and if we need to spend some time helping out we should perfect yep that is no, thank you for raising that. Um, Martin, did you want to ask about IPFS benchmarks? Uh, yeah, like, uh, I just wanted to clarify, is the repo I linked in, chat, in the chat the correct one, uh, Hugo? Like, is it related to the, the work they are doing, or is it something else? IPFS benchmarks, I think, is the place where that is happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Hugo, you're muted if you're... I was looking for the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's uh, that triple. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, uh, just a little, a little bit more about the benchmarks. They actually uh, this week or last week starting started to implement like browser tests. So I would like you to, if you have some free time, to look into it, um, make some suggestions for the browser tests they have there. Uh, I will personally spend some time uh, on it, but if you can spend a little bit uh, looking specifically into the browser test it would be really helpful to like suggest some improvements, uh, make sure the tests make sense uh, because they they are not kind of IPFS specialists, so they are doing like free uh, more or less free freestyle. So we we need to make sure they are aligned with our interests. Sure. Super cool. Uh, Jim, did you want to say anything or are you just observing? Uh, just observing. 
super yeah. cool. Um, well, that's great news because, I mean, I love your demos, but we've got a demo from Gazala. <laughs> Gazala, do you want to share what you've been working on? Sure. Um, I think you're overselling it a little bit, though. I'm so excited. The pressure. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, all right. I'm so excited, too. Let me try to figure out how I share the screen. Uh, uh, I think Hugo needs to stop sharing. Oh. Thank you. Uh, is it working? We see you. All Progressive right. P2P. Uh, all right. So I'll describe the idea that was there and then kind of slowly progress to where we are, uh, where I am with that idea. Uh, so there are a few accesses to the story. One is being uh, right now, if you use IPFS on the web, you sort of spun up your own node. Uh, so it means many, many nodes unless you have web extension installed. And they kind of don't resource share, they sort of kind of compete on resources. So that's one angle thing. Uh, then there's a, like, you need to uh, pull this library down. And there is no concise user experience in terms of where applications put my data. Can I like, look at it as a library or not? And in general, I wanted to have a like, smooth experience in terms of getting IPFS. Uh, Ideally, that should be a zero uh, install experience. Uh, and another angle to the same idea is, what if instead of a browser companion as a dominant way to kind of enhance browser experience, we could use something like a desktop IPFS or any kind of successful IPFS apps that you might have as a way to access the network. Uh, so what that means is the IPFS core could have something like a, a API and a gateway accessible to single domain. And we can use that single domain as a way to access IPFS network. And specifically service workers allow you to do those kind of things. Uh, so that's kind of what I start prototyping. Um, given that I don't control IPFS domain, I do use uh, another domain that I, oops, that's the wrong window. Uh, so I uh, have a long, uh, Hunet link domain, and if I load it, you saw a little thing happening in first, as that was service worker installing, and then it kind of takes over. Now if I go offline, all the things work. Uh, I also have a, a companion desktop application running that exposes HTTPS on a local host, uh, and right now it sort of kind of tries to route between uh, I, API gateway and um, or the other thing. Uh, no, sorry, API and a gateway. Uh, so it actually, uh, by default right now, it just uh, loads the web UI. And it does work, and you can do things with it, um, which is cool. So we're all working from the service worker. I'll show you how many lines of code that is. It would be even more cooler. Uh, but anyway, this was kind of, the way I see it, this is your library, and that's where data kind of ends up being. Uh, now. I want to take it further and having websites to actually leverage all this without having to do any kind of IPFS stuff. Kind of simple API to add stuff, read stuff, and stuff like that. Um, so other day I saw a demo of the cool new application that is called Peerdium. I don't know if you folks seen it. Uh, it uses, uh, anyway, you can look, at it, look it up later. So I kind of forked it and made a version that hooks into this. Uh, and I'm going to show you it in Chrome because as there are some challenges. And as I was trying to fix them, I actually end up breaking them more in Firefox. Um, yeah, so I have another domain. Now it did the same dance. It kind of installed a service worker. And now I can say, hello. Uh, how are you, folks? And hit publish. Uh, and it sort of generate the CID with the password here. If I go back to my Firefox uh, and my files, you see it create this hello. Uh, if I go there, you can't actually see anything because it uses encryption. Uh, but if I share this link with someone, uh, in this case myself, it actually fetches it from the same thing and uh, displays it. Um, so the cool thing about it is uh, how it's actually set up and how easy it is. So I'm going to show you the code. This is pretty much all of the stuff that is required to get the Peerdium app working. 
uh, and primary one is uh, LunaJS, which is just install the service worker. And you can see here, you see I just load the one from the LunaT, uh, should be available offline. And, oops, can you hear me? All right. I got a we, lost, that. we lost audio for a second, but you're back. All right. Okay. And that's another part. This is kind of the screen you saw the first time loaded. And there are a few things to notice here. Again, I am loading this in bad scripts. It kind of does uh, all the dance. Uh, and the, there's a meta tag that tells uh, what is the uh, root of the site or of this application that loads it. And this is kind of what we, if you kind of go here, this is where my app is actually is. If I can, I think this might be the one. Yeah. So this is a site that is being loaded uh, through the service workers, through the LUNET service. So what happened is yeah, two service workers and a little bit to get them wired. The service workers that just runs the IPFS and the other service worker is a self pair application. And what you do, you embed an iframe and through the iframe, you do the message channel exchange. And the message channel is used from the side uh, service worker and a mounting route uh, to load all the content from there. So maybe one way to show that would be going to some of the pages. So um, hold on, give me a sec. So if you wanted to load, I don't know, read me for instance, uh, uh, it would be this link. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of idea how easy it should be to deploy apps. Uh, and right now you saw that it just published thing without any permissions, but I think we can reuse this iframe that we have already in place for the communication to show you uh, prompts asking user whether it's okay to write, down, write or maybe do it on first, but basically control the permissions. Uh, so in a way, uh, IP, uh, this screen, like luna.link or whatever, I hope it will end up on IPFS eventually, uh, can be used to also track your permissions, which sites did you gave access to what kind of things. Um, so right now it just leverages uh, IPFS desktops that I have running, but the longer term idea is to, on the primary uh, web uh, service worker to actually run in browser IPFS node. So you don't have to have running at all, anything at all. Uh, one thing I should also mention that once you, so uh, when I showed you this demo on Chrome, I didn't have anything. I never visited Lunet link or I had, but I, I erased everything. Uh, it does all the dance for you to make sure that it can fetch it and install it and do all of those things. Uh, so you don't have to like do back and forth. Uh, I want to show you that it works offline too, uh, and you can still do kind of collaborations, but I can't because I think I will get disconnected, uh, but you can try it for yourself. Um, yeah, diff difficult to do a video call while, while demonstrating <laughs> the offline use case. Um, um, that's super cool. So, and do it on the dev tools. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, uh, Hugo is saying if you do want to demo it, you can tell Chrome to simulate a zero network scenario in the network um, tab. If that, uh, how that, do I do it? Sorry, I'm not. That's open right. dev tools, network. network. And then offline. Is it per tab or is it for all the stuff? I think it's per tab. Okay, let's see. Uh, hi again. Looks like it's still working. Uh, let me see if it actually does publish. <gasps> ah, no, it does. Oh, weird. Live, live, live demos. Uh, but that would be the dream. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. So, sure, so sure. that actually good, uh, uh, good leeway to the things that needs to be figured out and the challenges. So one of the biggest challenges with this setup is to keep the service worker alive. Like, so the reason I couldn't show you on Firefox is Firefox is way more aggressive than Chrome at killing uh, service workers unless they're actively used. And by actively used, that means unless they're serving requests. But in this setup, because we use a message channel, it, does, it is not considered to be actively used, so they get terminated. 
So what you end up with, your site does have a service worker, but it doesn't have a primary one of a node running. Um, there's a ways to work around it, but essentially by having iframe always in place for the page and kind of use it as a reconnection route. I just wanted to not have any kind of requirement on your app uh, for this to work, but I might have to do that. Um, uh, there are a few things. So uh, if you're running a server on localhost, uh, Chrome works. Oh, I, should, I was going to show you on Safari too. So, and it also loads on Safari the same way. Uh, except it doesn't work here because I think Gateway uses direct localhost access and in Safari they call, block it as mixed content. Uh, while uh, Chrome doesn't and Firefox doesn't on a document, but it does in a service worker. Uh, but I have a bug on file and I'll fix it if nobody else will. Uh, uh, but in the, I'm working it around with the fact that you can have a self-signed certificates. And you can make, uh, mark trustworthy and install in the So when I sell a desktop applications, that's what I kind of do. Uh, and that actually works really well in Safari, but not as well in Firefox. But hopefully combination of all of those things, you can have a reliable connection. Um, yeah, I think that's... Very cool. So the, the core of it is um, how can we use the best available IPFS node without needing the user to install a companion? Is that, is that yeah, so the dream here? Uh, dream here is that I can write a website, I can push, uh, not push, publish to IPFS and assign it to my domain and it just works and suddenly it can write and read content. Uh, Perfect. And the idea is not to have to install anything or do any kind of configuration. The experience will probably get better. Uh, and uh, I haven't showed... Uh, can you hear me? I don't know. I always see these dialogues that I can't tell. If yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, if you're seeing that dialogue, what we're hearing is like really choppy, but we're, we're filling in the blanks. Carry on. Uh, so this demo actually works on my Safari as well on my iPhone, which is really cool. Uh, nice. Um, yeah, so if you install more things, your experience will get better. Yep. But if you don't, then it will still work and you still have full access to your libraries that you can go and control your things from. I think there's a lot of interesting things you can do down the line where you can also uh, maybe in the web UI uh, add the endpoints to the replicating nodes that you're also in control. of. So it can replicate the live data sets that you add to your library and make it available even if you shut down your laptop. Very cool. Very cool. Um, this is kind of in line with what Martin and I were talking about where we, the general direction for companion, we want it to become, to have fewer responsibilities. Like its focus should really be demonstrating a really nice integration of IPFS in the browser, but we definitely don't want to have to depend on it. Like we want apps that can work without it and we want authenticated access to IPFS APIs without having forcing all that logic into companion um, for sure so this is great um, is there anything what's what's next for this demo uh, I think I can show one more thing that I wanted to and let's see if it works so if I pause this address it actually will load it in here and it will work too mm -hmm. uh, so only things that didn't work in Firefox is like between apps sort of thing mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see. Yeah, it did work. Mm -hmm. um, and wait a moment. Yay. Um, so, uh, so one thing that kind of irritates me here, but I would like to solve it, except I couldn't find a few nice domains that would just take any subdomain and route it to the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to write my own server. Uh, but if you do that, ideally, is this part, which should sort of go here yep. and use the same service worker infrastructure. Uh, and probably this should be more like IPFS IO or something. Sure. The idea is that you should be able to access everything. Yep. Uh, and so even if you don't have service workers, then public gateway will kick in and sort of get you there. Yep. Uh, 
it again. You can use the Cloudflare thingy to for the pseudonym. Excuse me. The the you can, uh, for the pseudonym yeah. thing that you just said. You can use the the Cloudflare thingy. Cloudflare dash ipfs dot com. Yeah, they allow you to do that. Do they do that? Stuff. I did not know they did that. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I don't know. My f experience with Cloudflare was not great. Uh, so right, oh, uh, I can actually show you what the the site is. So the site that is lunet.link, it's actually a static site as well, and it's fairly simple. So this is a main page that kind of does the same dance as the previous one, except it has some styling. Uh, then there's this main one that sort of set up the service worker, and this is a primary service worker that everyone talks to. So uh, I can show you how it's actually set up if it's not taking too much time. Uh, Go for it. Uh, where's the message in it? Oh yeah, here. So essentially um, the main page also acts as a, ah, sorry, I'll show you both ends. Give me a sec. Uh, so this site is actually hosted over GitHub. And so it acts in a double mode, if you will. Uh, it does an initial setup if you don't, uh, if you visit it and then forward to the web UI. And if you don't, then it usually embedded in the iframe and then so it will do. So uh, once it kind of does a little dance to get the service worker set up, uh, it moves on to, uh, I cannot see where it's at. I don't know. Okay, maybe I shouldn't try to live figure out what my code does here. Uh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, but anyway, so when, when it gets a message uh, from the iframe, it kind of creates this new connection that it holds on to and hold on to the message port and then connection is kind of takes the way of uh, receiving miss on a request on a uh, message channel, then serving it locally and sending it back through the same message port. Uh, and then service worker on the other end kind of deserializes it and uh, serves it to the side. So wow. this, you can actually see me trying to keep it alive <laughs> desperately by uh, sending messages to myself. Yep, yep. Uh, but anyway. The old poke. Um, Martin, is this, this is like the extension of the work that you were exploring? The kind of keeping an iframe around and using that as the bridge to a single yeah. service worker. Yeah. yeah, so basically, I, I hit the same wall with Firefox being like so, <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> determined to kill <laughs> unused uh, idle service worker. Yeah, so basically, uh, it's uh, an issue that uh, blocked us, I think, uh, in, in the past as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's highly it's highly interesting uh, when we start thinking about this and our move to a separate domain because we are planning to move uh, like the public uh, gateway to a separate domain so that like ipfsio is not blocked due to the content that's hosted by the gateway and among other things and reasons uh, so there will be a dweb link uh, domain dedicated for gateway alone right and uh, we've been thinking past about uh, sort of uh, having this uh, hybrid gateway so that uh, it transparently could install the service worker and uh, maybe this uh, uh, this uh, work you just demoed could be uh, on the path to that so that we Install a service worker that uh, is responsible for picking the best backend at hand, and basically the same you like the same URL will work, uh, no matter if you have uh, anything IPFS related installed, like browser extension, IPFS desktop app, or or nothing. It will just work, but it will transparently route you to the best like provider. Um, Super cool. Um, we should keep talking about this work. Gazala, have you got ideas for like next steps for this? Beyond um, getting it on like IPFS.io, which certainly it's on the roadmap. Yeah. 
I, I think there are a bunch of things that could move into the offerings that you already have, like the sort of fact that I have uh, my own app running on the desktop is kind of stupid. It should probably like uh, the things it does can be added to the regular IPFS uh, desktop or whatever the IPFS installation you have. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that I'm referring to mostly is issuing self-signed certificates and installed on your system so you don't, uh, so it will work on Safari as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's one thing that is I mentioned and I didn't show, uh, which I think is somewhat relevant. Uh, so on my site that I demoed, I didn't have to get any IPFS or any of that to get it working. Uh, so here's the, what you see on my screen is a publishing flow. Mm -hmm. uh, and essentially just uses fetch to post the data uh, of the thing, which mm -hmm. I think is important because like, getting IPFS bundled and all this stuff is not a trivial thing to do, mm -hmm. or maybe it's trivial, but like yet another dependency you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. But I think there's also an interesting angle to that where, what if you don't have to, what if you could just talk to this endpoint and do it that way? Um, and what is, I'm more kind of, the reason I started this journey, I'm less interested in like mechanics, Mm -hmm. But I think uh, there are a lot of opportunities in having a sort of user within the browser user agent mm -hmm. uh, as an access point to your data. Uh, so, and web UI, I, I can't find the tab now, but uh, web UI is sort of that, but I think it could probably get even more enhanced. Like there's a few challenges, like if I'm running the in-browser IPFS node and also have available desktop node, Ideally, they sh I should see them as a one thing, not mm -hmm. two things. Like data set should just yeah. work out. Uh, and those kind of things. And I think you, mm -hmm. there's an opportunity to add more endpoints. It doesn't have to be necessarily on your machine. What if you have one in a closet? Mm -hmm. Like edit there too. Yeah, uh, yeah. And kind of have a nice user experience. Uh, and I think like what work that Textile is doing is actually really interesting. Uh, and that's kind of more of a high level vision I would like to get to for apps. Yep. Or you can think of like uh, data sets as a threads yep. uh, where you apps can read and write data to and have your contacts where they can send data to without knowing who they are or like not. So I, uh, the origin policies in browsers actually give you this nice capability that uh, whatever happens on lumet.link, the site embedding it has no idea. Mm -hmm. So you can design nice interactions where you can allow sites to leverage your social graph uh, and send data without revealing your social graph right. or, or encryption used under the hood. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of longer vision where I want to oh. Audio choppy. Um, were, are you, Gazala, can you still hear us? Are you still there? Yeah. Great. Uh, would you be up for writing some thoughts up on an issue on web UI if you've got some specific kind of web UI related direction for this? I think you're like, your vision expands out very broad, but like, I'm really keen to like get this into like, what's the next concrete thing that we can implement? Yeah, I'm definitely going to translate all of this stuff in uh, learnings into feedback. Great. Uh, both for the API, uh, HTTP API and gateway and all the other. Perfect. Things. Thanks. Thank you very much. That's super great. Thank you very much, Gazala. Um, we've got one minute left. Uh, I think Lydell had a PSA. It's uh, already January the 9th, so OKRs should now start to be solidified. Um, we did a bunch of work at the end of last year to make uh, proposals of our hopes and dreams of what we would get built in the next three months, and they were good but they can always be better. So it'd be good to get all your feedback on the in web browsers OKRs and the GUI teams OKRs, um, because we still have a couple of days to refine them, shoot for the stars, hit the moon, amaze balls. <laughs> um, a little in, in lieu of, if no one else gives any feedback, I think you and I should plan to have a call on Friday where we just do like a final pass over them. Um, but if all you all here on the call um, care to give us some feedback, that'd be super good. Um, cool.
that is 5 p.m. Any, any last business, anything before the buzzer goes? Okay, this has been the weekly in web browsers and GUI team sync call. Please join us again next week. Um, and we will have IPFS working in a user agent near you soon. Bye.